when you're looking at these slides, you see these cells. And, and a lot of the challenge of, of path and cytology, and, and in this case, the, the heme path here, is, is this good or is this bad? Do you see, are, are, these, cells, are these cells friends or, or foes? And, um, and when you're looking at these, you see large nuclei. They look like they're, they're some kind of white blood cell lineage, presumably. They have very large uh, nuclei, kind of that pale cytoplasm. This is what you should take away as kind of the classic look for a blast. And it's a little bit tricky. You're not expected to be perfect at, at heme path and know exactly how to interpret these smears, but, but um, the point is tonight, take away that this is bad. And then the biggest clue in this, even if you're not super comfortable with calling these blasts, is you see these little tiny uh, needle-like things. I, I hesitate because needle is a, a whole buzzword that comes with other connotations, but you see these rods and they're called our rods. And that is a big tip off. Our rods are composed of uh, uh, myeloperox a clumped myeloperoxidase in the surface of these cells. And that's very classic for AML. It's distinguishing between ALL and AML. So blasts, um, blasts can be either lymphoid or myeloid, and that's how you differentiate AML and ALL. And as soon as you see myeloperoxidase, you know you're dealing with myeloid lineage cells and you have AML. And specifically, the most common type that's going to cause those rods is what's called APML or acute promyelocytic leukemia. There's a lot of, there used to be a different classification that went by these letters, and this is also called M3. It's, uh, it's due to this translocation of uh, chromosome 15 and 17 that involves the retinoic acid receptor. And the result is that you can't fully mature these cells as a result of the change in the retinoic acid receptor. And so the, the, the treatment is going to be to give all trans retinoic acid, kind of flood the system with vitamin A so that you kind of override that translocation, help these cells differentiate fully and, and ultimately treat, cure the, the AML, the APML. The main association to look out for with this, watch out for DIC. That's the complication. Mm -hmm happens with APML. And we got a lot of great questions that came into the chat. So one thing that someone brought up is how do you know these are not reactive lymphocytes? Great question. So reactive lymphocytes, they also have the clear cytoplasm. They have the dark nuclei, paler cytoplasm. But the, the main thing that you're looking for to identify a reactive lymphocyte is molding to the red blood cells around it. So it's, it's kind of got these projections that kind of encircle, not necessarily completely overtake, but encircle or mold onto the surrounding RBCs. And so that's, um, that's our, that kind of a tip uh, to differentiate. And then, and then the hour rods really, that's, this is kind of, this is kind of the classic look for them. So this is what I take away if you're able to kind of see those, those kind of linear line like inclusions in the cytoplasm, that's a good picture for an hour rod. This, this sort of like feels like it was almost taken off of you world because yeah. the hour rods, they're never that easy to see. They're there, but you got to look for them. So typically the way I the way I tell students is like if you're looking just for the hour rods you might miss them, but like identify lymphocytes first. Lymphocytes here is easy to see, and lymphocytes on step one should prompt a meticulous search for hour rods. Mm -hmm. 